right now on the WHAS 1119. We would never want another family to go through this. We're hearing from families impacted by fentanyl poisoning overdoses, what their message is, and how one organization is hoping to increase visibility. Plus, for the first time in years, both U of L and UK are ranked in the AP Top 25, what this means for the teams. And a design meant to protect us on the roads. It's speared through her vehicle. The WHAS 11 focus team investigates if guardrails are doing more harm than good. Right now on the WHAS 11 19. Thanks for joining us here on The Night Team. I'm Alex Dieterer. St. Matthews police have arrested Jamarcus Glover, the former boyfriend of Breonna Taylor. Glover is believed to be the original target of the raid that killed Taylor back in 2020. Glover and two others have been charged for drug trafficking in the Taylorberry neighborhood, according to his arrest citation. Glover used kids under the age of 18 to help transport and sell heroin, fentanyl, and other illegal drugs. Back in 2020, LMPD executed search warrants at Breonna Taylor's home in connection to a drug investigation that involved Glover, Taylor's ex-boyfriend. Those who were close to Taylor say her relationship with Glover was over when the search warrants were executed. In March of 2020, Taylor was asleep with her then boyfriend Kenneth Walker when they were woken up by banging on her door. Walker, a legal gun owner, fired what he claimed was a warning shot hitting an officer. This led to three officers immediately returning fire, killing Taylor. One of the officers who fired the shots into Taylor's home was Brett Hankison. Hankison fired 10 rounds into Taylor's apartment, one of those rounds entering a neighboring apartment where a child was sleeping. Hankison is now facing federal charges in connection with his involvement. That trial was supposed to play out in August, but it was pushed back to later this month due to the amount of evidence in the case. Hankison's new court date is October 30th. Every week, about 41 Kentuckians lose their lives because of a drug overdose. That's about six people per day. Those are the latest state figures, and for some, it's proof that even with progress, the Commonwealth has a long way to go in its fight to save lives. Connor Steffen introduces us to two mothers who know that loss all too well. Every day I wake up, he's the first thing I think about. Shuffling through old family photos is painful for Tammy Bob. It's not something I do every day now because I just look at him. The images are a window into a past life. She'll never get back. He passed June 8th. My birthday's July 9th. He ended up dying from an overdose. Two summers ago, her son Chase took a Xanax after 15 months of sobriety. What he didn't know was it was laced with fentanyl. Time has not healed this one at all. And this is him when he reached the top. Angela Parkerson shares a similar story of loss to fentanyl. Her son, Nick, was only 23 years old. He was killed in Barstown, Kentucky, April 23rd, 2021. The two moms, bonded by unthinkable loss, used their pain to bring about progress. Absolutely. We would never want another family to go through this. We want them to know that what it says, fentanyl changes everything. They're looking to bring that message to every road, roundabout, and stoplight in Kentucky with this license plate. It'll be available to drivers in Kentucky DMVs and online next year. It says fentanyl changes everything. Stigma kills, silence is deadly. Now, what at first glance may seem like a small gesture is actually a major milestone for these families. Because in Kentucky, in the fight against fentanyl, visibility is key. I hope they learn about fentanyl. Um, I hope they reach out to their kids. That's the number one thing. The latest state numbers show more than 2,100 Kentuckians died from drug overdoses in 2021. 73% of those deaths stem from fentanyl-laced substances. Because we always wonder if anybody's listening, if it's actually helping anybody. As Kentucky's drug epidemic takes more lives, these moms are doing what they can. It's a slow, thankless process. We were so grateful and excited about that. But with recent progress, the two hope they can save lives. In Bardstown, Kentucky, Connor Steffen, the WHAS 1190 team on your side.
Parkerson says the group has to sell 500 license plates in the first year for production to continue. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, help is available. You can call the National Addiction Hotline at 1-800-662-4357 anytime to get connected with help. We'll also have a list of additional resources on our website, whas11.com. A new lawsuit has been filed in Lexington over Senate Bill 150. The lawsuit filed in Fayette County Circuit Court is against the Fayette County Board of Education and Attorney General Daniel Cameron. The lawsuit alleges the new law around bathroom access, pronoun use, and classroom speech violates students' rights. The plaintiffs are families of five trans and non-binary Lexington students who also say the law constitutes as sex discrimination. It's the first challenge to the education provisions of Senate Bill 150. Another lawsuit is challenging the section of the bill which bans gender affirming care in the Senate. JCPS is expected to install weapon detection systems into high schools this week while the schools are on fall break. JCPS confirmed that Eastern High School, one of the largest in the district, will be in the first round of installations. The principal there confirms to us that a student held up a knife during a fight with another student at lunch just within the past month. The weapon detection system installation also comes days after a weapon was found at Doss High School, which forced them to postpone their homecoming. This is bringing guns, knives, all it. It really scares me because I leave, my children leave me, and I know they good when they leave, but I worry about them coming home with all the violence that's going on in JCPS. The units from Evolve Technology will be used to catch concealed weapons like guns as students walk into school every morning. JCPS leaders say they'll first install units in high schools and then move to middle schools next school year. A fun day today at Churchill Downs as they hosted Family Adventure Day. Today's event was especially geared towards families with young kids with over 20 events for kids under 12. The next family event the track plans to host is Trick or Treat at the track. That will be October 29th and it starts at noon. Tonight, the Juggernaut Jug Band entertained crowds in a uniquely Louisville experience. The legendary band played music at the Black Acre State Nature Preserve with music that originated right here in the Derby City. They say events like this are an important way for the Nature Preserve to give back to the community. So we want the community to be able to come out and enjoy Black Acre. And then also it's important that, you know, it raises some uh, proceeds for Black Acre to help us uh, keep afloat here and keep our operations going. Proceeds from tonight's event went to Black Acre, which is a nonprofit organization that cares for the Nature Preserve.